In this video, I'm going to show you how I use Netcat for file transfers. Stick around. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. I'm Chris and the focus of this series is penetration testing and cybersecurity. So um, if this is something you're interested in, then subscribe to this channel uh, and hit the bell button because uh, more of these videos are coming. Now, if you need a security check on your website, if you need one-on-one -on -one penetration testing coaching or cybersecurity consultations, please check the links in the description. Uh, what I also want to say is that um, Course 1, uh, Python for Penetration Testers, in which uh, I teach uh, the basics of Python, is up and running. Uh, check the link in the description to get a substantial discount. All right, uh, now, if you haven't seen the previous video on um, getting reverse shells with Netcat, uh, go ahead and watch it because it's relevant to this one. So I'll also link to it in the description of this video. Okay, so when would it be appropriate to actually send files with Netcat? Um, because there are many ways of transferring files between systems. So I'm talking about penetration testing. Um, and in this case, um, Netcat would be relevant uh, in a couple of situations, I would say. Uh, think of uh, the fact that you're working with a... So let's take a, a situation, for example. Let's say that you're working with a Unix system or a system that doesn't have WGET or other ways... Um, of moving files around but you have netcat available and i have actually encountered this situation quite a few times now you could also be on a linux system and work with uh, a windows environment and uh, you have a shell on it um, on that windows uh, system now more specifically you have a command shell so um you don't have PowerShell, which enables a few options of file transfer. You also don't have a uh, you also don't have the cert util feature, which is another way of transferring files. But somehow you were able to put Netcat on that system, uh, such as by using an upload feature uh, through a vulnerable web application, for example. And similarly, uh, so these are only two of uh, uh, the situations. Uh, that netcat would be relevant. Uh, similarly, there might be other uh, scenarios for which netcat makes sense for file transfers. All right, so uh, how do you actually do it? How do you actually transfer files uh, between systems? Um, now, we're going to follow the same scenario such as in the last video. I have my Windows machine over here uh, and my Kali Linux over here. Uh, and I have netcat on both uh, systems. Now, to get netcat check the link in the description of the other video because that's where I posted it. Uh, that's Netcat for Windows and I actually added, uh, added it to my path over here so I could call it from whatever directory I'm in. Um, and as I said in that previous video, you can think of Netcat as enabling the connection or enabling um, a connection between the two systems. Um, now, even more basically put, it provides a communication channel between these two systems. In the previous video, we saw how we can do remote control uh, through that communication channel. Um, and the same way as we do remote control, uh, we can also send files. So in this case, uh, like I said, we have Netcat at both ends uh, of the communication uh, channel. And in order for file transfers to happen, we need to know the IP address of the sender as well as the port to which it listens. Uh, so uh, we have this uh, important.txt file. So if I say type important.txt file, we have uh, this text file and we, wanted, uh, we want to send it to Kali over here. Now, what we'll do on Kali, we're actually going to uh, we're going to listen on port 444 and into important.txt. Okay, so we have the minus L for listening, minus V for verbosity, and minus P for the port number. 
And then we have the port number 4444 uh, greater than important.txt, which is the file name. So here, netcat actually listens for connections on port 4444. And when someone is going to connect to the host on this port, it's going to take whatever is incoming through the connection and it will actually direct it it will direct all that information into a new file important.txt all right now on the windows end uh, from where we send the file we need to know the ip of cali and of course the port so if i do on i have config over here i can see it's 192.168.85.130 okay we can just copy this Control shift c all right minimize that so the command uh, to send the file will be nc minus w let's say 5 control v to paste it 4444 4, 4, the port from or less than important.txt all right now in this case minus w is for timeout in seconds so five seconds uh, then terminate the connection then we have the ip and the port less than file name so in this case we take whatever is inside important.txt so we take from important.txt and send it over uh, to that IP to Kelly's IP on that port and then uh, terminate the connection uh, if it's idle for more than five seconds all right, now uh, we hit enter to actually run this, but of course enter over here to listen. Hopefully I did it like time-wise right. If not, I'm have to I'm going to have to actually do it again. And we should see it uh, over here. Okay. Now, if we look over here and see cat important.txt, we can see this is an important file. And the file is actually has been received. Now we uh, we can check it more accurately using uh, MD5 sum. So to make sure we have the exact same files on both ends, we'll just MD sum it. So in Linux, it's as simple as MD5 sum uh, the name of the file important.txt, and we can see uh, the result. We can see the hash. And in, window, in, in Windows, um, it's still simple, but it's not a command that's actually uh, been used that much. So we use cert util minus minus hash file, the file name, and the type of hash. So it's not minus minus, but it's simply hash file. Okay. All right. So instead of MD5, we could use uh, other hashes or other hash algorithms as well. Okay, so we compare the first four, 6497, 6497, and the last four, 28FB, 28FB. And if they match, uh, such as they do in this case, that's actually a really good rule of thumb uh, for accuracy. All right. Now, this is actually only one way of sending files using netcat. Uh, in this case, we wanted to send the file from Windows to Kali, and we listened with netcat on Kali and connected from Windows. But you can also listen on Windows and connect from Kali uh, in the exact same scenario. And I would encourage you to try this exercise on your own and let me know the solution all right this is all i have for you fellas in this video like i always say make sure only do to only do this type of engagement or practice in controlled and safe environments or if you're doing penetration testing please make sure you have the appropriate permission to do so now comment below if you want me to do a video on a few of my favorite penetration testing and cybersecurity books uh, now, don't forget to check the description of this video for penetration testing uh, services for one-on-one -on -one coaching and for cybersecurity consultations. I would deeply appreciate if you shared this video around so that it can reach more people and we grow this uh, cybersecurity educational channel together. 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.